welcome prints to the kitchen and the pantry. We're going to be installing a library ladder in here so that we can reach the top shelves. Library ladder, also known as a rolling ladder. We're going to get rid of this thing that we've been using and make it safer and much better looking. All right, come along with this. This will be fun. My wife has been using my ladder, and the only way for me to get my ladder back into the shop is to build her a library ladder. So I'm happy to do that. We've got 10 foot ceilings in here. These are way up here, and we also want to put in for shelves up here because we have several feet above this shelf right here that we can store stuff as well. So this is way up there, and it's not really safe to have this ladder in here leaned against this where it can twist, and it's always in the way. And so hopefully, this library ladder we can set it up here at an angle, climb as high as we need to safely, and then when we're done, stand the ladder up and put it up against here and be able to slide it back and forth so it's not in the way. Also, I wanna be able to unhook the ladder, move it over here so that she can reach these shelves way up here as well. So we want a bar across here as well that we can hook the ladder on. So this is all stuff we're gonna to have to work out to make this usable, um, but this should be a lot of fun and really rewarding once we get it done. Okay, and here's the boxes that come inside. This is probably the rails. This is probably the ladder. Let's open them up and see what's inside. Okay, it looks pretty well packaged. I'm going to get this out, lay it all out, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, we got the ladder all laid out. Looks like there's a bunch of hardware here, and this is going to take some assembly time, but I think this is still a lot faster than me building my own. And so I like the looks of this one. This is the oak one, so I'm pretty excited. It should be pretty strong. Now there's directions here. It's only one page. It's not very exhaustive as far as what bolts go where, but we're going to go through that as well. There's a section here for the 87 and 96 inch ladder. It's all one piece. Okay, but I got the 108 inch ladder. This is also applicable for the 120 inch ladder. And so you can see they have to be spliced together. And so that's what those brackets are there for. Okay. It looks like there's some tension rods right here. There's four of those. And there's tension rods there that go through the holes there, there. And there's one there and there's one there and you can see the holes here and there's a tension rod that goes right there as well okay this piece right here just looks like a top like a little handle you can grab onto um, these rails here install through these holes right here okay so in my case there's 50 of these big bolts for this 108 inch ladder this probably varies for different heights of ladders but these bigger bolts there's a bunch of them and some of them will use nuts and some of them won't so where they go in and thread through here um, there's captured nuts in here, so these don't need nuts for that because that'll be the nut, but they will use nuts like this Where these bigger bolts go through this frame you'll use a nut on the back side there, okay? And so there's some nuts right there uh, The other bolts, so those are everywhere. Those are like they're gonna hold the little handle in here They're gonna hold the steps in here They're also gonna hold the plate together these bigger bolts and they go all the way up and down the steps now There's only four smaller bolts and they have sort of a Phillips head on them. And what those are gonna do is hold this cross rail in right here through this hole, okay? And then they have some capped nuts. I forget what you call these, but basically they have a cap on them for a little bit so you don't scratch yourself on them. Okay, there's only four of those and only four of these screws for the four ends of the rails, okay? There, 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 there. Next for these cross rods, this is just some all thread. It's just all, the whole thing is thread. And so they have some cap nuts for those as well that'll go on each end there and those only four there's one there's one for each end so there's two four nuts six nuts and eight nuts so for these little ladder handles there's two washers that go with each bolt and then there's the little capped nut there's a whole bunch of these washers they're all the same size they came in two different bags it looks like they had a bag like for the basic kit and then if you got a longer kit there was an extra bag of washers so each washer is going to go underneath each of these bolts like that. For my first step, I'm putting the top and the bottom of the rails together, the sides together, and I'm using a washer underneath the nut and a washer underneath the bolt. And there seems to be enough washers for that. So I'm going to resist the urge to tighten everything. I'm going to get it all assembled and all the bolts in finger tight before I tighten everything up. Here's the tools we'll be using. I'm going to use a 3 8 impact on the lowest setting though, so we don't break any bolts. Or So this is a 13 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, a 13 millimeter wrench to back up the nuts, and then a Phillips screwdriver. Should be it. Okay, so if you just slide this in, um, these won't align. You have to lift it up just a little bit to get them to align. And just because it sticks out a little bit on each side, it looks like. Okay, I'll carefully run these down with this gently. 
Okay, on to the next one. Now for this handle rung, it has a captured nut as well, so there's a little recess in here. And then we'll put the nut on this side. Should thread right in. These rods all go underneath one of the steps. So there's four of them, and they'll go directly underneath the step. Okay, we got all this side kind of snugged just a little bit, not tight though. Go ahead and get these in place here on this side. Now we have, let's run this one down just gently here. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of go down the ladder here and just make sure everything seats. Okay. Okay, so it looks like, you know, some of these steps might have a distressed side and a smooth side. And maybe you want those all to match. I don't know. This is the back side of the ladder. So that's going to be the wall side. But if you flip it over here, you can see that this side is really smooth on the front. That's a smooth side. So I didn't pay attention to that until I got them all together. But you might just look at that and make sure that, you know, the side that's going to be facing out all kind of matches. Here's another side that's kind of distressed. I don't mind the distressed look at all but I also think they should kind of match. So let's just kind of look here. Smooth, 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 smooth. So we got lucky on the front side. Okay, and I've got this Bauer 3 8 impact set on the lowest setting there. I don't know how much torque that is, but I'm gonna go through and hand check them all anyway. So. These will just have to be backed up with a wrench here. And you know, pulling on them here, I don't want to overdo this, but because these aren't graded bolts by any means, but we'll just make sure they're all tight. We'll go over them all by hand. And then what I forgot on these rods was to put a washer, because if you don't put a washer, too much of the thread will stick out, and then it'll pop these caps off. So I'll just thread this through here, put it through here, we'll get this nut and washer on the other side here. Thirteen millimeter also. A little tweak there. I feel pretty good about that. Now we'll just flip our ladder over. That one's a little tight. We're gonna have to spread that apart. Okay, that was easy. Washer, 10 millimeter nut. Now, these are ungraded bolts and these are small, so I'm gonna be super, super careful with this. Probably be better to do this by hand. And there's only four of them anyway. That's it. Okay, again, make sure you put in that bolt and that bolt before you go tighten them down, because otherwise they could be misaligned and it's just a lot easier to get them both lined and then tighten them both down for the rail here, okay? Um, one other thing to keep in mind, you know, my hands were clean when I started this project and I guess the oil from the hardware was on my hands and, you know, I'm going to have to clean that off now and it's in a lot of places. So, you know, there's fingerprints there and that wasn't there when I opened the package. So that's definitely for me. So just keep a clean rag around, wipe your hands off periodically while you're doing this hardware and try not to touch the wood, I guess. And this surprised me. There was not one hardware deficiency. I had an exact number of everything I need, except for there were three extra washers. Okay, and that's the completed ladder. This took about an hour, and that's with me videoing. I mean, right about an hour. So this is this went a whole lot faster than I thought it would, and way faster than me trying to make my own. It was easy. Let's see if the hardware system is easy. So there's several boxes here. We've got four rails, and let's open it up and see what they look All right, here's the hardware. And it looks like there's a couple shims for these in case the ladder thickness is a little variable. So let's measure that in a minute. And that's one of the reasons I actually bought this from the same company because I didn't want my hardware to be not the same size as the ladder. So this also comes with some end caps. And these are just little end caps that have a little 
hex screw there that you can tighten down. These are rail connectors right here, and so these just allow you to connect your rails together however many you need to. And so these are the wheels, obviously, and they'll bolt up to the sides of the ladder. This is what's going to be supporting all the weight. So, <clears throat> And these are the sliding hook rails, and this is what I didn't understand. I couldn't see in my mind. So that's one of the reasons I'm making this video, so that you can see kind of how these work. And so once you can see this in your mind, um, it'll make sense. So this will be the fun part right here. This will allow us to move the ladder from rail to a rail on the other side of the pantry. So we can only we only have one ladder in there. As far as these rails go, I think you can get them in three, three foot, three inch sections and also four foot sections. I got four of the three foot, three inch sections. Um, I got four of those. And so it looks like they're adjustable. There's a little set screw right there. They can use to adjust it back and forth to tighten it or put it on a wall stud or whatever you want to do. And um, they're pretty light, actually. I thought these would be the heavy part. And it looks like these little ends just slide in like right here. And so that can join the rails together. <clears throat> and we'll give you a nice smooth transition piece there. And then there's some hardware. Uh, the end cap looks like it can go on pretty easy just like that. And that'll be your stop so that you'll bump into this with your hook right there as the hook slides along the rail. Don't forget to put your hardware on the correct side. So this back side here, the downside is the climbing side. This side is the side where the hooks are gonna go. And so this has the tapered part right here and these hooks, and you can see they're just the right, they're just the perfect fit. We don't have to use the shims. All right, so when you're setting up where you want to put your rails, you wanna measure the height of your ladder plus one inch. And that's why they say ladder height equals H plus one inch. And so that one inch comes from right here where when you mount your wheel on the side of the ladder, it's gonna be flush with the bottom of the ladder basically. This is one inch from the bottom of the bracket to the bottom of the wheel. And that's where that plus one comes from. So that's what they're talking about here. Height, floor to the center of rail support. And so that's where I'm gonna engineer the height of my rail is H plus one. So I have it, my ladder is actually 107 and a half inches. So I'm going to make it 108 and a half inches. And that'll be the center of my rail. All right. Since I'm going to be using the ladder on both sides here, what I'm done is I'm going to cut the ladder to length so that it fits this shelf right here at the top here, because that shelf's already in place. I'm building these shelves over here. So I'm going to build these shelves over here about the same height as this one so that the ladder will work here and over here. But I'm gonna go ahead and make the ladder fit this one first, and then we'll translate that over here into shelves that I build over here. All right, let's get started. So basically all I did here was take a two by four, and this shelf is the same thing as the shelf up here. So there's one by fours here, and then the shelving part goes across here. And these are all screwed into here as well. But basically I just took a two by four and put it right here, put a few screws there, a few shallower screws here, a few deeper screws here, and that's gonna be plenty. Most of the weight's gonna be against here, not pulling down. So even though this is plenty strong, um, most of the weight's gonna be pushing against it. So this is how I'm doing it. I'm not saying this is a safe way or the right way to do it, but this is just how I'm gonna do it for a shelf. This will give me a little bit of working room as well for my rails that go across here. Okay, so it looks like as far as hardware goes, there's four screws, these are the shorter ones, that go to the wheels. Okay, which means you can get this screw in, but that screw, you're gonna have to take the wheel off right there. No big deal, they sent the appropriate wrench, and you can use this little Allen key wrench to pull the wheel off, to pull that little out, pull that little uh, bolt out, and um, take the wheel out, and then you can put that screw in. So that's what those screws are for. I'm probably gonna mount these with the screws, and then later replace them with bolts, just because I feel more secure with bolts. As far as the other hardware goes, these longer screws, there looks like there's eight of them, and which would be just enough for my brackets, because I have eight of these brackets for the rails, and so that I think that's what those longer screws are for. As far as the rail adjustment on the brackets go, this little tiny Allen key that they send goes in this one right here. You can loosen this, 
and then slide this bracket up and down wherever you want it so that it looks more even or you know visually appealing or whatever or more secure if you need it in a more secure spot as far as these end caps go these have little flat sides on each end and they've got an allen screw in each one and so they just pop on the end like that and i think what i'm going to do is kind of line them up like that and then set one to where you know this is straight up and down right here and then that's horizontal the flat part's horizontal right across there it's a little hard holding the camera and showing you but basically i'm going to set one and then i'm going to set the other one on the other side with it on a flat surface so they're perfectly lined up okay good okay so we're just going to take this wheel off here all right looks like there's a little washer we got to pay attention to when we go to put it back together there's a washer on one side oh there's one for the other side as well so we'll have to make sure to get those in place all right now that we have the bracket off though we can use this to mount it on the thing here and i thought about mounting them to the inside i thought that would be more stable we can actually slide it back and forth it won't hit the wall and ding the wall as much but i guess my worry is that we're going to step down and step on the wheel um, as you're stepping off this last step because you always stepped kind of right below the ladder and so i think people would step on it so as much as i want to protect the rest of the walls and things inside we're going to go ahead and mount it on the outside now they've put this they've made this cut at 10 degrees and you can see right here we just slide our square right down make it flush here and you can see it's right on the 10 mark right there so it's 10 degrees cut you don't want these straight up and down because the idea is when it's weighted the ladder is going to be tilted and so this is how we're going to do it just like this and so i'm just going to kind of center it here since the directions don't really say how far in to put it or how far out to put it i'll make my marks i'll drill my holes i'll put my screws in and as long as it's flush right here this should be about the correct angle and it's tilted the same way that the bevel is at the top of the ladder so the bevel at the top of the ladder is tilted that way and so these are tilted that way too okay we got one in just drilled a little pilot hole here to uh facilitate this is kind of a broad shank screw and so we're using our long bit to get reach down in here okay back in the pantry here we got the wheels on and you can see i have it in the vertical position so see how the wheels are canted like that so that's expected in the vertical position wheels on down there so it's the correct height we've got our rod in here and I just went ahead and put the screws in. Um, I wanted to put this a little lower, but I didn't want the screws so close to the bottom edge that they might split out. So I put them up a little bit higher and it feels like they get a good bite in the wood there. And this is a nice fit here. And it's, I put my level on it so it's nice and level. Now um, I've clamped this hook bracket here. And basically I dropped the bracket to where it touches the bar. And then I made it flush right across here. Watch that space as I raise the bracket. So I made that part of the bracket flush with that part of the bracket so it's nice and flush right there and then clamped it right there okay that's what i'm going to do to this side over here <clears throat> same same we'll drop that in place right there and then we'll make the top of the brackets flush and they're flush right there let's get this clamp on here okay well it might come apart and hit me in the head but it might not okay now we're going to test it and see if these stop when the ladder hits about 10 degrees okay so when we pull the ladder out to climbing position now we're going to see if these stop right about 10 degrees because i want it to stop right there bam now i'll try to show you from a couple angles here i'm going to pick the ladder up bring it out let the hooks catch and then we'll set the wheels down Okay, now if this is 10 degrees, uh, that means the step should be about level. And I'm happy with that. We're going to call that good. Now let's see what it looks like from up there. I'm going to pick the, the ladders in climb mode right now. So I'm going to pick it up and put it up against the wall and set it down. So that's stored mode right there. That ladder's straight up and down right there. Now I'm going to pick it up and climb up it I'm gonna pull the ladder out the hooks stop it right there i'm going to set the wheels down on the ground 
Excellent. Wow. I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> this just worked like really, really well. I'm so happy with the way um, they built this and the way I'm setting this up. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my holes. Now you'll notice my brackets stick out a little bit past the bevel there. And so it would be ideal to have a little bit more bite in the wood right here. But because I'm having to custom make this shelf and this brace um, where I'm putting my rods based on where my shelves are already, I'm having to make that compromise. So I'll go ahead and mark my holes here, I'll drill my holes, put my bolts in, and uh, then we're going to test it out. Sweet. Yeah, it's already dinking into the wall there. Huh, well, it's not gonna get stored here in front of the freezer anyway. So where it will get stored is on this side. So it'll kind of bang into there and then it'll bang into that baseboard over there. So I may need to put some little rubber baby buggy bumpers on here. Okay, friends, let's step into the pantry here. Ah, well, this took a while because I had to build all these shelves. And so it took me about six hours today to get all these shelves built. And there's one there. There's all these up here, leveling them, getting all perfect. Um, they're pretty stable. And then once I got to the ladder part again, this went super fast. This only took about 20 minutes, this rail. So I cut it to length and um, just screwed it up there. I measured the height up for the center of the screw holes uh, of the one that exists already and just translated that from the floor up to here. So it's a nice, uh, nice fit. And you can see it just slides back and forth nicely. It bumps into the bumper up there, the end cap. There's an end cap on the end of that rail and the hook bumps against that. So my feet, you know, aren't bumping into anything on that side. And when we roll it over here, it just does the same thing. It kind of bumps into the little end cap there. Okay, which gets pretty close down here to that, but it's not hitting. So the only place it's hitting is over here. And I think, you know, if we're just putting the ladder right in the middle um, and we're not sliding it back and forth over here because there's no reason to keep it here because it's in the way of the freezer. Even if we slide it to the side, you still can't open the freezer easily and um, works really, really well. And so couldn't be more pleased. <clears throat> yeah, I just got to come in here and roll it back and forth because it's so smooth and quiet. And it takes, it's effortless. I thought, I really thought um, that I would need to buy roller because they make roller style with wheels that lock into the frame up here. And I thought I really wanted those because I thought those would be a lot quieter and a lot smoother. I thought this would be real rough and real hard to move. This takes nothing to move it. I mean, I, I mean, I'm using my pinky and I'm not even pushing on it and it's just, it slides like nothing. Okay. So these hooks, and they don't make noise, at least not yet. And I was worried, you know, they might make a metal grinding or noise, but they've engineered this pretty well and it doesn't make a noise. So I'm very, very pleased as far as the hooks go. Oh, slow there. All right. And so this is kind of the finished product. There's nothing on the shelves up there yet, but got the rails back on. Um, it was easy to find the holes that were already there. And so we've got that shelf in and these shelves up here. 
Got this rail or that front two by four painted and it's braced really well. It's pretty solid there, so I'm pretty happy with that. And then that rail's back on. All right, so I'm just gonna do a little test here, make sure it still does what it's supposed to do. Okay. And now let's lift it up and put it in the fine mode. Okay. Now this ladder is nine feet tall. <laughs> I ended up not cutting it and it is, you know, 11 foot ceilings in here easy, so. Feels very secure.